All right, everybody, it's Jesse, Iowa Audio Review. I already did a uh, full, like, in-depth video on the Sony uh, SSCS5s. Uh, it was quite a lengthy video, but it gets, you know, deeper into things, and I take them apart and yada yada. But not everybody wants a long video like that, so this is going to be the quicker version of basically the same thing, just kind of the quick and dirty. These are the Sony SSCS5s. They come in a box that I've already taken them out of because uh, you don't need to see me take them out of the box. I think in the other video I take them out of the box. Anyway, yes, standard, we'll get right into it. Standard grill covers that you've seen on, I don't know, many speakers for many years. Plastic frame, black mesh. That's pretty standard. They look, they look okay. They look pretty nice. Uh, matte black finish front with these kind of I don't know, you can't really tell, but it's almost like a machined plastic. You can see like little micro grooves, kind of like a like a record, uh, but it is plastic. Uh, looks nice. I mean, depending, I don't, I don't want to get too much into looks. Looks is preferential thing, but anyway, um, I believe it was a five five point one two inch woofer, one inch soft dome tweeter, three quarter inch uh, super tweeter, and I believe the frequency response was fifty. What was it 50 hertz to 50,000? Which the whole super tweeter thing up here that Sony does quite often is, in my opinion, is a gimmick because almost nobody that buy or well, yeah, we'll say anybody that buys these speakers is most likely not going to have any music content that goes up to 50,000 hertz. Almost everything, CD streaming, you know, every, pretty much everything everybody uses is going to be 20 hertz to 20,000. So, mm, this tweeter above 20,000 hertz is probably not going to be doing anything. And, oh, I did, I think I mentioned it in the other video, but I did look at the crossovers in these. And okay. a quick look um, at the capacitors and doing a little bit of quick math. I think these are crossed over woofer to tweeter around 2,000 and then tweeter to super tweeter around 12,000. So it's, the tweeter is almost like a mid-tweeter, kind of, and the super tweeter is actually doing all the work from around 12 up to 20, so it kind of almost makes it more, really more of a three-way. I mean, it is a three-way, but a three-way that you can hear. And nice Sony badging on the front, even after you take the grills off. Um, I don't know, I can't remember what the column material is made out of. Very light, rigid uh, type of poly cone with nice, soft... Nice soft rubber surrounds. It'll last a long time. Uh, the fabric dome, uh, we'll say tweeters, uh, seem to be of good quality. Um, standard vinyl, black, you know, laminate finish, whatever. Um, porthole in the rear, rear ported. So be mindful of that. Hanging these on the wall or placing them on a bookshelf. Uh, you don't want to block that too much. My tape measure. Uh, I'm sure you could just look up the dimensions, but I don't know them right off the top of my head. So we got seven wide by roughly seven deep, call it seven and a quarter. Realistically about, might as well just make it eight if you include the depth of the, bi the uh, binding post. And then height, uh, let's see, height is about 13 and a quarter. So yeah, not bad. Roughly seven, what was it? 13 and a quarter high by seven wide by eight deep. So my one gripe with these, and I mentioned it in the other video, is very nice looking binding posts. You know, these look of nice high quality, etc. Um, oh, six ohm rated for 100 watts. Not gonna get into watt ratings right now. Um, pretty typical banana plug found on many entry, oh, entry level wires. You know, still a decent plug, but more of an entry level plug. Ugh. Almost goes in all the way because it's a shorter plug. There we go. But you still see it could go in further. More of a higher end banana plug. You find in more of the high-end cables. Not even close to going all the way in. 
so you get quite a bit of wiggle. It's only about halfway in, really. So that's definite. That's not good. And this is a, another more of a higher end style. This is a BFA type banana plug. These are probably my most preferred because they do seem to fit the tightest. These, even though it only goes in a little bit way, the way they fit, it is quite a bit sturdier. But still, the depth, that's that's not okay. Um, and I've been finding this a lot on more of these, we'll say, good quality, I don't want to say high end, but good quality budget speakers. They all, they, they, I mean, they really try to look the part, but the thing with the banana plug, or the binding post being that shallow is kind of ridiculous. Uh, let me see here. A good example. I show this in another video too, but these are a much higher quality set of binding posts. If you look here, the cheap banana fits all the way in. And even the, uh, I'm gonna lose my set screw here. Even the uh, full size, you know, we'll say high quality banana plug. Whoop, all the way in. Fits all the way in, nice and snug, how it's supposed to be. And then even the, even the BFA, uh, all the way in. Super snug, super snug. So that's how, I mean, I don't know what the price difference is to make a binding post deeper so it properly seats a banana plug, but the Sony, uh, Pioneer, Andrew Jones, uh, some of the Micas, um, what was another one? I don't know. I've come across this a handful of times now and I think it's kind of ridiculous. So we'll move on to, let's see, did I cover everything on the front here? This is plastic, This they are made of wood. If you want to see the inside and everything, watch the other video. They are made of a um, okay quality particle board, but this fascia here is plastic. This is plastic, and uh, as far as weight, pretty good weight. You know, they, I mean, they feel sturdy. They, they don't feel cheap or anything. And then, yeah, let's see. Do a quick uh, for what they cost. I'm gonna say they. I usually see them. I got these on a quick sale on Amazon for $73 free shipping, and they came in one day. Um, but that didn't last long, so I think the, usually you're going to find them around 100, 110, all the way up to maybe 140, 150 ish, which mm, they're worth it. I mean, if you can get them for 100 bucks, absolute steal. But you get them for around 140, 150. There may be some other options, but even even if there wasn't any other options for 150 bucks, these are still quite good bookshelf speakers. Um, to me, the base seems very accurate, and uh, even though they only get down to about, I think it's 50 or 55 hertz, they seem to get down to that 50 or 55 hertz quite well, and quite clean and accurately. And then the, uh, the, high, end, the high range drivers also are, uh, deliver pretty darn good detail and clarity. I have not actually really overpowered them yet. I've cranked them up pretty loud. Uh, listened to a couple songs around around 90 decibels in my space, and they were still they were still hanging on. The woofers were getting really close though to uh, I mean, grant type of music, but I was just listening to some classic rock, and and the woofers were getting pretty close to being out of out of space. So I can't I don't think I'm leaving anything out. I mean, there's there's not a whole lot to them, so. I think I'll get them hooked up and we'll uh, listen to a few, a uh, little bit of music on them real quick. Okay, got the my Galaxy S9 here, which I'm just going to use the stereo microphones that are built in to this phone. And I got it roughly about, uh, roughly about same level as the tweeters. And centered where I would normally be sitting or where a person would normally be sitting centered between the speakers. So this is not in any way really a super accurate representation of how these speakers sound. It's more just a sample for fun. So we'll go through a couple songs of copyright free music that I have because it seems like YouTube is just pulling everything nowadays. So let's get started. Okay.
Okay, I think that's enough. Uh, this is all being run off of out of my H or my computer there through the Emotiva PT100 preamp DAC into the, a new bearing or a reference A800. Um, I didn't mention that these do have actual crossovers in them. I have worked on and uh, seen a lot of the other uh, speakers in the past that they just throw a cap on the tweeter and call it a day and let the woofer run wild. These do have actual uh, three-way, uh, you know, I can't remember if it was all second order or not, but they're good crossovers. Uh, um, oh, what's the, the well, not polyfoil, but the caps on the crossovers aren't electrolytic, which is good. I can't remember the other, the audio grade caps. We'll just say the crossovers have audio grade caps. Uh, the tweeter and super tweeter have air, air core uh, inductors, and the woofer is on a iron. Well, it might be an air core. Either way, the crossovers in them are quite good for their price. And uh, uh, what else? Uh, there is some bracing on the inside. Um, I think for the same amount of money, they could have done better. But there is bracing on the inside, so they're they're. they're this doesn't seem to be a whole lot of cabinet resonance. It's they're pretty solid. Um, oh, what else? I do have a pair of the Pioneer Andrew Jones 
I can't remember what they are, like SP20, SPV22 or something like that with the four inch woofer. And it's a toss up. Um, I say I would say if I was gonna buy both of them new and they were in the same price range, I'd probably I'd probably take these the Sony's. But being, you can probably find the Andrew Jones Pioneers for probably cheaper used on eBay or something, maybe. Then maybe, I don't know, I, st I still lean towards these because I do like that they have the little bit bigger woofer. They seem to have just a tad more punch, uh, even though the Pioneers are, are quite warm. And these, you know, these can be too. They're just having a little bit bigger woofer. The base seems to be a, just a bit tighter and a little bit more punch where you need it. Um... But overall, um, these are better than any other book sh Sony bookshelf speaker I've had in the past. I was actually, you know, I watched Z reviews and a couple. Uh, oh, sorry, I can't. I can only name drop one guy. I can't think of the other guys. Um, we'll say I watched a handful of YouTube uh, reviewers, and um, I had to get. I I wasn't gonna get them like I said in another video, but once the price came down, I had to get them because I've had. Three or four other different types of Sony bookshelf speakers in the past. So I really didn't expect a whole lot. Um, but I was actually quite pleasantly surprised. So if you like them, you like the looks, I'm sure you'll like the sound. Because I'm quite picky with sound. And if I think they sound good, I'm sure about anybody will think they sound pretty good. Uh, um, yeah, I would definitely consider these. Other than that, like, subscribe. If you have any questions about them or anything else you want me to do with them, Put it down in the comments. I have a set of Sony, uh, what are they, the SS-M7A audiophile speakers back from the mid-90s, I want to say, that were pretty cool and pretty special back then. Um, I might do a comparison of these against those old Sonys um, and just kind of see where, you know, I think those were made in like 95, you know, it's been 20-some years, kind of see... Uh, how much more how much you get for your money 20 years later but anyway have a good night that's it bye bye